All right, now what we need to do, now, now we need to use the DAX, uh, create a measure and use the DAX to um, return the, uh, my data for the right uh, number of periods. Okay, and this is this measure. Okay, so let me just try to recreate this measure. Okay, you'll add a measure. Uh, I I named it uh, AC periods. Okay, let's name it AC rolling. Okay, and now we need to calculate um, calculate my my actual data. So I'll just just use my my existing measure. Sorry. Um, was called a C, or just do the sum of of your values, right? But I already have it here, so I'll use this one. Okay, now I need to I, I need to get all of the periods up until the selected uh, month. Okay, so we will use um, the uh, function called um, dates. So dates in period. This is your function. Dates in period. You'll use this. We'll use this one also for uh, rolling periods and so on. It's it's a very useful function that returns a table with several rows. Okay. It actually generate generates a table with several rows. That's how you get multiple months. Okay. And you need to start with your date. So uh, you need to find your date. From your calendar table just from your normal calendar okay so this is the first uh, first thing here um, and uh, then uh, your start date okay what is my start date I want to get the months from January up until current month okay so I need to get the first date in my year like the starting date in in my year, right? The first of, of, of January, right? And the function for that is actually called start of year. Okay, let's use start of year. It'll be the first uh, of January in the current year, the year that was selected, for example. And uh, again, you refer to your date field here. So uh, calendar date, all right. That was my second parameter now. And now you need to uh, return the number of intervals, okay? And now for the full year, that's 12 months, okay? So, so I would use 12 to get all the 12 months, but I actually just need um, the uh, uh, number of months uh, up until the current selection, right? And how do I get that? I actually already have this in my calendar right because I know that the uh, month of May is my fifth month because I have it in my calendar right and you have it in your calendar I'm sure everybody has the month number uh, you know in, in your calendars so just use your month number like month ID or something like that it's typically called uh, in my model in my data model it's actually called month number month month number right here it is okay so for may this is five for august it's eight very simple and um and here you specify the interval and interval can be a month or a year because you can do the same thing for years okay but for now we'll just use this for month okay so this will return sorry about that so this is my new measure. I called it AC rolling. And now let's try this. Just add this measure to my values. <gasps> works. It works. <laughs> okay. So it's May. Uh, May is uh, selected here in my uh, uh, slicer. And I got five months. Of course, this will work also for six july and so on so this is the basic technique how do you how you get dynamic uh periods 
data periods, time periods uh, on your chart. And now, of course, you can do um, different things with this. Um, one idea is having basically year-to-date periods, right, up until the current month. Um, then next thing is um, with the same technique, you can simply retur return 12 months, okay? Maybe you want to have a plan and just show it for 12, 12 months because you have your plan or your budget for your costs, right? You have it for the full year, okay? So what you'll do, your next measure will be very similar. So you'll calculate your, okay, this is the forecast. Let's start with the plan, sorry. I already have this here, so I, I won't type the text uh, again, but it's, you see, calculate your measure for, for the plan. And then again, use dates in period, refer to your date, use start of year right because you want to start with january at least for for this case okay and um yeah and so this will be my start of year and then simply return 12 periods that's it 12 intervals and 12 monthly intervals okay instead of month by the way you can use year okay so uh for example how about having five five rolling years? Maybe you have a five-year plan uh, that starts uh, with the next year or something like that. You know, in this case, you just you know type five and use year, and you know you'll have your dynamic five rolling year years that you will control with your uh, filter here. Okay, that would be one thing. Then daily reporting. Okay. We'll cover daily reporting, like daily flash reports and things like that. It's a huge challenge because, um, you know, typically you have your weekly time series and then, you know, it's, it's, it's Tuesday and you only have two days. Uh, so maybe it's a good idea to show all the seven days starting with the last, last day that you have, like from, from from Tuesday back to the previous Tuesday, for example, or to previous Wednesday. So again, this would be rolling days, either eight, rolling eight days from the last day, um, uh, last uh, from the same day last week, or seven days to have the full, like, so that you, can, you can compare last seven days to previous weeks, calendar weeks, for example. So in this case, you would just, Type seven here and use uh, days, right? Day like that. Okay. But in my case, I'm actually returning my full plan. All right. Remember, we want it uh, all the 12 months. Okay. So this measure will always return uh, all the 12 periods. And now I can use this in my chart here. I just move it to plan. Now let's, you see, now it looks like this. Uh, this is the zero BI visual. This will work also with the native visuals. Um, but of course, um, the, the, the charts will be, will be different. Um, maybe in this case, you should also, aha, okay. Um, well, this is, uh, okay, this is one option. And you can also do the same with, your forecast, okay, because it's much better that you actually add your forecast. Maybe I have the forecast for the full year or I have the forecast for the rest of the year, okay, if starting from August, starting from September to the end of year. So you can take this and add this to your forecast. All right, and now this is exactly what I, I actually wanted. Um, you can delete the old one. And this is already my, my chart. So now it has the actuals go up until the current month, and then the forecast and so on is, 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 is behind it somehow, right? In the chart, and you, but it's always the full year forecast and the full year plan, all right? 